Hey folks, this is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. It's been a while since we posted a video. Well, we're in the mid-season and I, I thought I'd just do kind of a random uh, rundown of what's happening so that you guys can pick out what is useful, just like we're picking out our tomatoes and whatnot. Um, we begin with tomatoes. And what I wanted to show you, tomato season is definitely on and we are growing the this is a Cherokee purple, very typical of this kind of cat facing is what we call it. Um, and this little character looks like he's ready to, uh, um, ready to go into the kitchen. One trick about this, even though these things are green, if you'll notice, we haven't had much rain and yet still we're starting to get these splits. And one of the sort of trade secrets that I've discovered, go ahead and it's better to go ahead and, and take your harvest early, even if there's some green, bring it in and let it ripen, rather than split out and have ants and all kinds of other things uh, exposed to the elements. So uh, it's just a preemptive way of bringing home the harvest, you can see there. Um, and we've had fairly good luck, I'd say exceptional luck. This is a orange or yellow tomato. It's called Dad Sunset. We got it off the Rare Seeds folks, Baker Creek, and it's the second year we've we've planted it and it's just performed well. My daughter just mentioned that it's a low acid. She can she can eat it without having um, a reaction to the acidity in a normal tomato. And uh, it really, it's a beautiful tomato. It's, it's a little small for sandwiches, but it's it's certainly really sweet. it has a very fine flavor. Um, this is one of our hillbilly varieties. Uh, it has sort of a striping effect on the top. They've been doing well. Again, you get a little bit of this cat facing quality here. These are all heirlooms, by the way. Um, and some are kind of pretty like this. Uh, this Here we have another Cherokee purple. And the thing about the cat facing is, you, and I, we've already posted some information about it, I think I planted them out too early and they got down into the 50 degree range and apparently that, that's not good for tomatoes. However, if you'll notice, there's very little on these dads so that there's something going on with the particular varieties, I believe, but there's nothing you can really do about the cat facing other than to wait and set your plants out when it's really nice and, and warm and we were really pushing it. Plus we have our typical situation, very little, uh, I mean, just the minimum of sun, maybe five and a half, maybe six hours. We're here in this little patch that the sun hits. It should hit here in about, oh, about half an hour, we'll have some real sunlight and it will go on till about, I don't know, seven, five or so. And we try to position our plants so they catch the maximum in the archway um, but we're fighting it we're fighting the the nature of the tomato likes to grow in full sun and that's a minimum of six six hours at least however we've typically gotten some really good tomato crop regardless of the yeah sun we've, we've over, year over year we pushed the envelope but I think we might avoid some of these situations mm -hmm. now on the cat facing Normally it's okay, but you have to pay attention. You'll get, you'll see this. This is split. And if you can see inside the tomato where it's cracked open, you see the interior. Usually that's an invitation for ants and other bugs and mm -hmm. just bacteria to get in there and mess it up. So this tomato may actually get tossed. We'll cut it open and see, but it, um, it may not be a keeper. Whereas, you get something like this, you just have to pay attention to how deep these fissures and these these pockets go and whether you can see there's a little, see that? We tend to use a lot of these ones that aren't split or have um, bugs in them. We use the these ones for salsas or um, dishes or salad topping or whatever since you can't get like that perfect tomato slice for bread. Right, and we, we may wind up cutting a good section of this out and or just disposing of it. Now we're gonna move on here. Um, 
I'm enjoying this cup because it's it's su such a solid cup. It's ceramic. It's very thick. It holds a gracious amount of delicious brewed coffee that we enjoy every morning. And of course, you can carry anything in it you like. But it's heavy. It's not going to blow over in the wind. It's made by Mar. Mara. Mara. M A R A. Mara mugs. M A R A. And we'll link it, it in the description. Comes in all kinds of cool designs. It's just a real handy cup to carry around, and and it uh, keeps things warm once once the cup is warm. And if the gardener doesn't have his coffee, it's not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, um, I wanted to talk about one other thing. Yeah, let me see. Let me grab. I'm going to tell you about the clips and okay. these clips we started using on tomatoes right and the deal about them is you um, you put your string in this little gripper thing and close it up and it has a clip I'm not going to clip it because it it's really hard to undo mm -hmm. and you um, clip it around the stem of the plant and it actually holds it up if um, it's not just for tomatoes because we've used it over here on our peppers. You can see maybe where we've uh, clipped up our peppers on a string that's just running horizontal. Maybe we can show it over there because it's a little easier to access because yeah. you have it on those plants over there as well. Yeah, so uh, let's go over there in fact. We've used it on our okra here. Okay, and it's just, just holding it upright because these okra tend to grow up and these are the regular okra um, this is a variety that is uh, we're growing that's a regular height we're already harvesting a, a few okra now we're getting into the season and this is a burgundy okra which will have a burgundy colored pod it's a beautiful plant too it just looks great and of course you get that hibiscus like flower which makes it even even nicer as a garden ornament but um, we're, we're growing these, and as you can see, we've used, because to keep them from blowing over, we've run a string horizontally, and we've clipped it. So, in essence, these clips have many uses. We've used them, of course, for the tomatoes. They've been great. If you want a quick live demonstration. Oh, can't see. All right, hang on. Let me, let me grab a bit of string. You grab the string a little bit sure it's in there. Best to come in under a branch if you can. And there you go. Mm. Boom, boom. Well, um, I think that's all for, for today, but we would invite you all to contribute. Let us know how you're doing. If there's anything you have that uh, you can comment on, especially from experience on cat facing, any ways to avoid that. And also any of your favorite tomatoes. We've uh, nailed down a few, and now it's basically Hillbilly, Cherokee Purple, and Dad Sunset. And they're our go-to varieties, and we'll probably stick with them mostly uh, from season to season. And if you have any other comments about what's going on here or what's going on in your garden, we'd love to hear from you at GardensAll.com. You can write into our Facebook, let us know what's happening, and we'd be delighted to hear from you. Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. Keep on growing. <laughs>